Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Chalmers United Church. Um, if you're worshiping with us for the first time, welcome. If you haven't been here for a while, welcome. If you're a regular, welcome. Welcome, everybody. Nice to see you, and Happy New Year. Um, I have a few announcements. Uh, tomorrow is the Structures Working Circle um, in the back hall at 7 o'clock with David King, and we hope many people can come to that. Um, envelopes for the new year are on the back table there. If you use envelopes, you can pick up your box. Um, there's a virtual lunch and learn on Tuesday, January 10th at 1 o'clock, and you can sign into Zoom at 1245. The topic is diversity, equity, and inclusion, and the speaker is Jermaine Marshall, so he'll be leading that discussion. So, and we welcome back Nancy Clark. Um, she was with us last Sunday, and we welcome you back, and thank you for joining us and leading us in worship. Um, I invite you to uh, say with me the acknowledgement of the land. Since time immemorial, Indigenous peoples have occupied and cared for this land. In acknowledging this land, the traditional home of the Anishinaabe, and Haudenosaunee, we seek to rebuild right relations with First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples, to learn from them and to live on this land with respect and gratitude for its bounty. I invite with you to join with me in the centering prayer. Creator spirit, moving over the waters, you renew our baptism. God of the flood, you save us from destruction. Holy Spirit, Jordan Dove, you came upon Jesus. Descend now upon us. Voice from heaven, call us by name. We are your beloved. Amen. We light this candle to remind us that Christ is the light of the world and present in our midst. May the life and words of Jesus enlighten us on our way. Please join me in the call to worship. All who thirst, come to the water. Come, all who yearn for forgiveness. As the waters of the Jordan washed over Jesus, so may the Holy Spirit wash over you and I. Our gracious God beckons and blesses us. Let us give praise for new life in Christ. Uh, please join us in singing the first hymn, Voices United 342, You Servants of God.
Please join me in offering the prayer of illumination printed in the bulletin and also on the screen. O oh God, we long to hear your holy word in fresh ways. Open our ears to the call of your voice. Open our eyes to the dawn of a new day. Fill us with longing for your future. Amen. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 42, verses 1 to 9. Here is my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. The second reading is from Matthew, chapter 3, verses 13 to 17, the baptism of Jesus. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of, went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my son whom I love, with him I am well pleased. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Let us join now in singing hymn in Voices United 120, O Jesus, I have promised.
this, this sermon. There we go. This sermon is entitled, You Are My Beloved. Some years ago, I was at a wedding, and when it came time for the scriptures to be read, they were read by the groom's uncle. And just before the groom read the chosen scripture, I think I've got that wrong. Just before the uncle of the groom read the chosen scripture, he spoke briefly about the groom. Groom was a little nervous, but it was okay. The uncle began at the very beginning. The uncle said, I danced with joy the night that you were born. I remember being in the upstairs hallway. My dad, your grandfather, was on the phone with your mother, one of my six sisters. I heard my dad saying that she had just given birth to a boy. I, the only boy of seven children, danced in the hallway at the news. I was overjoyed. Yippee, I said, after so many girls, the tide is finally turning. Although that was over 20 years ago, I still remember the look on the nephew's face. He was beaming. It is indeed a great thing to think that someone danced with joy at the news of your birth. We like to be celebrated. We like to be celebrated at our birth, our birthdays, graduation, weddings, at Christmas, at different times in our lives. We like to think that we are very special to someone. I imagine that it was somewhat the same effect as hearing the statement, you are my beloved child. With you, I am well pleased. The statement is so important that Matthew, Mark, and Luke all wrote about these confirming and loving words that came from a voice from heaven. The voice confirms Jesus as someone special to God. It's like the voice is saying, you can trust in Jesus. Jesus calls us to draw closer to God's love. We've heard a lot about God's love. Do you know that you are beloved of God? We may think we know this already, but have we taken the time recently to really and truly let it sink in? To really and truly Believe it. In prayer, in quiet and silence with God, that love can be deeply felt. It is a time for the love of God to truly dwell within us, to be deeply felt in our minds, our hearts, in our very being. Feeling God's love through quiet time with God is a theme in a children's book by Max Lucada, You Are Special. Punchinello 
is a small wooden person who receives a gray dot sticker when he does something awkwardly or accidentally or because he's so plain looking. Gold star stickers, Punicello doesn't have any, gold star stickers are given for a beautiful appearance or for things well done or just because you already have many gold stars. Punicello has many, many gray dots. One day, a new wooden person arrives. Lucia does not have any stickers on her. Stickers simply do not stick. They just slide right off of her. She believes that this is because she spends time each day with Eli, the woodcarver who made the wooden people. Punchinello bravely visits Eli. Eli is thrilled that he has come. Eli tells Punchinello that he is special because he made him. Eli says, the only thing that matters is not what other people think of you, but what I think of you, and I think you are special. Punchinello doesn't understand. Eli says he will understand after coming to see him every day. As he leaves, Punchinello believes Eli's words and a gray dot falls to the ground. It was like Punchinello heard, you are my beloved child. With you I am well pleased. During the baptism of Jesus, the heavens were opened up. These words of confirmation were heard or felt by those nearby. The baptism of Jesus was at the beginning of his earthly ministry. At the beginning. Although Jesus was confirmed of his being from God, he had yet to go forth and grow in that identity. The scripture readings in the season of Epiphany from now to Lent reveal much of Jesus' ministry and mission. Recently, I read the Christmas story to my six-year-old granddaughter. We sat together in front of the book a couple of times. Each time, she had the same reaction to one phrase, good news. When I read that the angel said to the shepherds, I bring you good news, she would immediately ask, what's the bad news? She's only six. I think it was just a response. I don't think she's cynical just yet. Well, what is the bad news? What is the bad news about being beloved of God? I suppose that if there is any, it's in the fact that though you and I are beloved of God, we are still in the world. The world around us has its influence upon us. For good and for ill, we are still in this world. 
but with our identity firmly as God's beloved, we can venture forth with greater joy and stronger courage. The very next thing that Jesus did after his baptism was to be led by the Holy Spirit into the desert. Here the devil tempted him. He was tempted to forget that God's kingdom is for everyone. He was tempted to think that God's kingdom was for his glory and not for God's glory. Jesus clung to his identity as God's beloved. So he followed God's will in God's way and in God's love. We are still in this world with its verbal gray dots or negativity. We are still in this world that judges our missteps. We are still in this world with its invisible gold stickers pressuring us to require more and more of ourselves and of others. In our identity as God's beloved, that influence is felt less strongly. It is still there, but it matters much less to us. Jesus continued rooted in the assurance that he was loved and known by God. Jesus prayed often. In prayer, he reconnected with God. Through prayer, through Jesus, God continually says to us, you are my beloved. You and I are God's beloved. Be rooted in that assurance. Go forth to love and serve God. Strive to do so often. Let us pray. Come to us, O gracious God. Reveal to us your presence, your love, and your guidance, now and always. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. For those of you at home, who would like to support Chalmers on the ongoing work it does in our community, please check out the information in the e-blast or on our website. Um, we'll be bringing up the offering plate, and if you have anything that you haven't put in the plate, you can put it in the plate after the service. Um, thank you for everyone for volunteering your gifts of time and energy, as well as your financial gifts in order to support our church. We're grateful to be a part of such a generous and caring community.
We prepare now for any prayers. We'll bless the offering, have the prayers of the people, and then you are invited to pray with me. Let us pray. Through our gifts, O oh God, may all hear the call to compassion. Through these gifts, O oh God, may all embrace the ways of sharing and of justice. May all know life with the loving church. O oh God, as we enter this new year, we thank you for your presence with us in all the years of our lives. We have known joy and also sorrow, success and failure. And through it all, you have been with us, the companion of all our journeys. Much of life is fleeting, and so we thank you for things that endure. The love of faithful friends and family, wisdom gained from experience. The reliability of nature and your steadfast love. We thank you for this new year which awaits us. O oh God, we pray for those known to us who are in our hearts and on our minds today. We pray for them now in silent prayer. We pray these things in the name of Jesus, who became the Christ and who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our next hymn is 333 in Voices United. Love divine, all loves excelling.
benediction is responsive. You are God's beloved. We go forth to fulfill our high calling as servants and witnesses of Jesus Christ. As you go, know that with you is the love of God surrounding you, the grace of Christ upholding you, and the guidance of the Holy Spirit comforting you, now and always. Amen.